Hi there, this is Alana from Alana Lee Photography and in this video I'm going to show you how to add feather wing overlays to your images using Photoshop. Our first step is to bring the digital wings we'd like to use into our Photoshop document. You can do this in a few ways but the way I like to do it is to go under file, choose place embedded, and then navigate to the folder on your computer where you've stored your wing overlays. As you look through your file, have a look at the different poses and wings and see which one you feel will best suit your image. I'm going to try this one here. Just double click or, or click once and select place and this will place your wings in your image. You can see that they have a blue line around them and this enables you to resize or transform them as you go. When you do this, you can just click and drag from any of the handles around the shape box. And when you do this, you want to press down your shift button. This will allow you to change the size of your wings without reshaping or distorting them at all. Let's move them to approximately where we'd like to place them. And we'll adjust their size. That's probably pretty good and we'll just press enter to save those changes. The next step is to hide the parts of the wings that we don't want to see, those that would be behind her body. We can do this in several ways. One of the easiest ways to do that is to apply a mask to your layer. You can do this by clicking this button here at the bottom of your layers panel, and that will place a mask next to the wings here. When using a mask, you want to select a black brush. I always like to set my brush to a soft setting. And then make sure the black color is selected. Black will always hide whatever is in your mask and white will reveal what's in your mask. By doing it this way, you can always, if you make a change or a mistake and you'd like to make a change, you can just go back Switch your brush over to white and paint those wings back on where you want them. Now, obviously you would take a lot more care than I'm, I'm doing here when using your mask, but this gives you an idea of how you would hide the wings where you don't want them to appear. This isn't necessarily the best way to do things for this particular image because you can see we've got some detailed areas here in her hand, in the lace around her body, and as well in, in her hair where we want to hide the, the wings. So instead of using a layer mask, we'd like to make a more detailed selection around her body. I'm just going to delete this layer mask so I can show you another method of making our selection. When making more complicated selections, I prefer to use a different tool in Photoshop. In order to do this, let's temporarily turn off our wing layer by pressing this little eyeball icon just beside it over here. And we're going to make sure we're working here on our background layer. I'm using the most recent version of Photoshop, Photoshop 2021. As long as you have one of the most recent versions, you should have their new tool called the Object Selection Tool. With this tool, Photoshop uses its artificial intelligence technology to figure out your selections for you, and it does a pretty good job most of the time. All you want to do is to roughly draw around the object that you want Photoshop to select, just like this. Again, you don't have to be very exact. And then Photoshop is going to figure out where your subject is. You can see here it's missed a few little areas of details. You can go up into your different uh, icons at the top bar tool. This one means to add something to your selection. And this one is subtract something from the selection. Here we want to add something to our selection. And we want to tell Photoshop to add these little bits and include them into their selection. So we want it to include that little bit of her eye and her forehead. It missed a little bit of the tassels here on her dress. 
And again, if it's not doing a perfect job, that's okay. We can clean it up a little later. So we're just going to quickly select around these areas. A little bit over here on her hand. There we go. He wants to miss those fingers there for some reason. And that's good enough. Our next step is we're going to hit this Select and Mask button here at the top of your toolbar. From this, it's going to open up the Select and Mask window. I generally leave all of my settings just at zero or as the default over here. And I like to use this little hand tool which is going to let us refine our mask a little bit more is what you want to do is toggle this tool and you want to just trace around the outline edges with a relatively small brush to tell Photoshop that you want it to have a better look at those areas. Often you'll need to do this in, in areas around the fingers. Again, these little tassels, lacy bits of the dress and so forth. and that will tell Photoshop to make a better selection around those areas. You can v click view and zoom in to 100% and, um, and further refine your mask. You can see it's really missed a lot of her hand right here. If you select the paintbrush tool, either add your selection or subtract your selection, depending on which button you toggle here at the top, we're gonna add to our selection. You can change the size of your brush and just paint over the areas that you want to add to your selection. Again, we're just going to do a really quick job at this because the purpose of this tutorial is really to show you how to add the wings and not learn about making these super detailed selections. So let's just make our brush a little bit larger here so that we've got all of her dress included we're going to go and check up here around her eyelashes and her hair. Get these braids, make sure it's selected all of the braid. And we'll just check over here on this hand as well. Now, obviously, like I said, you'd go in here and you'd take more care in making your selections, but this gives you a general idea. Once you're happy with the way your mask looks, you want to make sure your output settings are set to new layer with a layer mask and just hit OK. This will add a layer mask to your subject and we'll just click everything else on here. And you want to move your wings below that layer mask because that layer mask is going to hide the parts of your image that you don't want to see. And there you go. You can see that the wings now look like they're behind our model and not blocking or in front of her. Our next step is to blend our wings in so that they match the color and the contrast of the rest of our image. You can do this by using any of your adjustment layers in the layers panel here. And uh, how you want to do that, for example, say we wanted to change the color of our wings. Select your hue and saturation adjustment layer and if you drag your slider back and forth whoops sorry that's affecting the background what i forgot to show you is that you want to press this little button here or alternatively you can press alt or option and click right here between the two layers that's going to add this little layer or a clipping mask and that's going to tell it to only affect the layer directly below, which is the wings and not our background itself. Again, let's try this again. Moving our hue saturation, you can see that that's changing the color of our wings depending on where we drag our slider. You can also change your saturation, make them black and white if you wanted to, or really boost up your color and the lightness or the darkness of the wings themselves. Another adjustment that I often use is a curves or levels adjustment. This will help you match your, uh, your contrast to the rest of the image. 
Clicking the Levels Adjustment, again, click your Clipping Mask shortcut or press Alt or Option while you're clicking the two layers. This will clip it and tell it to only apply these changes to the layer directly below, which is our wings. This will help you adjust your contrast in your midtones, highlights, and shadows. Play with your little bars until you get something that looks like it matches the rest of your image. There's no set formula of any numbers that are going to work. It really depends on your base image and what looks right to your eye. Another thing that's very important when making composite images is to ensure that the shadows on the overlay that you're adding match the shadows and the lighting in the image that you're adding them to. In our image, you can see that we have some light fall off here um, and the bottom of the image and her dress have darker shadows than up here where the light is hitting her directly. So we wanna mimic that on our wings themselves. To do this, go down here and just click this little icon, which is your add a new layer. We wanna make sure that again, we press our control and option and click here to add a clipping mask to ensure that our shadows are only going to apply to the wings directly below. Let's just label this as shadows so we know what we're working with here. And then using our paintbrush, we're going to make sure it's set to a nice soft brush. We're also going to adjust our opacity here, or, or keep our opacity at 100, sorry, and keep our flow down at a very low number, something around five or six. We're going to select a color. We can do that either by selecting our eyedropper tool or selecting our paintbrush and then holding alter option and clicking on the area of our image we want to sample shadows from. I like to do it from somewhere on her body itself, probably down here by her feet is a good place where we've got some nice dark shadows. We could also select from here behind her ear as well. Then with our soft brush selected to a low flow, we're going to just softly paint in some shadows and we're going to just build those up gradually along the bottoms of the wings, imagining the light is coming from this direction. We would have shadows behind her body, shadows from her head falling on the wing itself. And you're just gonna keep building up that layer. until it looks right to you. Now, these shadows look a bit more blue tone than I'd like, so I'm gonna go over here and select maybe this kind of dark burnt orange color. And we're just gonna build some more of that color into our shadows. And you just play around again until it looks like it's right. The shadows that are right next to her body are going to be a lot darker than the shadows further away. especially under here. Again, you're gonna to wanna to play around with that and uh, take your time to paint them looking at the rest of your image as a reference and get those shadows to just how you like it. Sometimes I like to change the blend mode of my shadows layer to give a more realistic effect. To do that, while you have your shadows layer selected, just go under here and choose something like darken or multiply. Lightener screen are not going to work for you um, because they're going to lighten. Overlay and soft light can also help you blend them in, but most often I find multiply is the best way to do that. And then you can also change the opacity here as well if you want to make a subtler effect. I'd like to show you another method I use to sometimes change and blend your overlay object in with the background. I'm noticing that the wings look really a little bit too white and I'd like to add some of this orangey yellow warmth into them. So to do that, I'm going to select my eyedropper tool and go down, oops, select the eyedropper tool, go down, pick up this kind of browny ochre color. Let's brighten it up a little bit. 
maybe something like that, nice golden orange. And I'm going to create an entire layer full of that color. So to do that, we'll select this little quick button here, click solid color, and that's going to create us a layer with that nice orange color. Next, we're going to change the blend mode of that layer to overlay or soft light, most often soft light. And we're going to remember to clip that by pressing our Alt or Option to just the wings themselves, and then dialing back your opacity of that layer way down. Again, this should be a nice subtle effect to give them a more golden color, something around there. I'm also noticing that some of the areas on her dress almost have this little bit of a blue tint to them. So I'm going to just use my eyedropper tool and directly sample a color from our background layer, that kind of blue gray color. I'm going to click here. I'm going to add another solid color layer of kind of that bluey gray, maybe something in this area here. Change that to soft light blend mode. Clip that to our layers below so it only applies that to our wings. And I'm going to leave it at 100% for now. I'm going to switch our mask uh, to a black mask. So that's going to hide everything and I'm just going to paint over it. In order to do that, I'm going to press Control or Command I to invert that to a black mask. And then with my brush set to, again, a soft brush on a low flow and uh, white, that's going to reveal that blue color on the layers below it. So we're just going to increase the size of our brush a bit and we're going to paint some of this blue color from the dress into the top of the wing. And I don't know if I can, if that's going to show up on your screens or not, but you can kind of see how that brings some of a different color, uh, color tones into the, the highlights of the wings itself. There. And that kind of gives them a little bit more of an interesting effect. Again, you're going to play around with your color matching colors in your wings to the colors you find in your subject and in your image itself. And just do everything to taste until you get a, a result that's pleasing to your own eye. One thing you want to be careful of when adding overlays to your image is to make sure that the depth of field of the overlay matches that of your portrait or your subject. To have a look at this, let's zoom in to 100%. And we're going to notice um, that this is, uh, we're looking at the depth of field here. And we're going to see that the wings here appear a lot sharper than her hand and the back of her shoulder. In order to match this up a little bit better, while we're on our wing layer, uh, we're going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we're going to select a blur that kind of matches the rest of our picture. So by adding a radius of well, maybe about, it doesn't have to be a lot, maybe about one and a half pixels, we're going to uh, create a more believable depth of field. And as you can see, because this was a smart object when we brought these wings in, it's added our Gaussian blur filter here as a smart filter this means that we can always go back in and change our, our level of blur if we want to, if we find that we want to adjust it in the future. Another thing we notice is that our image itself has noise in it. When we were shooting here in this uh, photo shoot bay at the Portrait Masters Conference, we were shooting with a low level of light, and so we had to move up our ISO in order to compensate, and that created this nice uh, level of noise in our picture. So we want to mimic that also on our wing overlay. To do this, again, with your wing layer selected, go up to filter, and this time we want to select noise and add noise. When we add noise, we can see uh, that it's here and we want to again adjust our 
uh, percentage here until it matches the rest of our picture. Probably something around 5%. That looks great. We're just going to fast forward a little bit and I'm going to show you here in my final edit and open up the different layers so you can see again exactly how we put this composite image together. We've got our original image down here. Uh, I added a little bit of a, a background texture overlay to just kind of blend the background. Here on the wings, I'll open up the folder for our wings and show you all the different layers. We started with our original wings. We blurred them a little with a Gaussian blur. We used um, some noise to add in some noise. And then we added a variety of color toning uh, to show the different uh, effects here, as well as some shadows on the wings to blend them in with the lighting of our scene. We close those wings up there. I also added a light orb to give it a bit of a more magical effect. And then finally, I added on a texture layer over everything here. This texture is one of the textures available in the Portrait Master store under the Alana Lee Texture Collection. And I find that by adding a texture overlay over the entire image, uh, it tends to help blend everything together and make it look more cohesive. If you look at this one here, I've got it down to a subtle opacity, only 27%, uh, if it was full strength. Um, you can see that it's uh, a lot harsher and creates uh, a different effect. I often like to be very subtle with my textures. And I also uh, applied a layer mask here to take the texture off of the skin areas of our model. And finally, I just added a little bit more highlight to the top of the wings here. After I added that orb, I realized I'd need a little bit more light shining on the wings themselves. And there you have it. I hope you have fun creating with feather wing overlays, and I invite you to reach out. If you have any follow-up questions, you can find me on my website at www.alanaleephoto.com or on social media channels at Alana Lee Photo.